On November 10th, an important step toward reconciliation took place at the base of the Kukutlem Dam, where a special blessing and groundbreaking ceremony took place in advance of a salmon hatchery that will be soon be constructed. Returning salmon to the Kukutlem River is a significant step toward reconciliation, as the construction of the Kukutlem Dam in 1913 was one of the greatest injustice inflicted upon Kwikwitlam people as it took away their primary source of food and commerce, the salmon. Tri-City Community Television was there and brings you this coverage. Ready to start now, I'd like to introduce Councillor George Taffy. <clears throat> Good morning everybody. My name is Councillor George Chaffee. My portfolio is the lands. I've been fighting this for my people. I've been fighting this for about 120 years, 30 years uh, I've been doing this. I am here today to talk to you to do something before we start this great event and to tell you that this work that we did right now are, for, are from the ancestors the ones who have left us, who fought this so that we could be here today, and the elders, my elders, the ones who make me who I am, they are the ones who deserve the honor, and they're the ones who did the fight in order for us to be here today. So in saying that, in honor of my elders who are sitting here today, I am going to ask that everybody in this room who is here stand and acknowledge my elders for the work they have done. Thank you, my elders. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you, ancestors. And I am so sorry that you are not here to see this, but I know you're here in spirit. So in saying this, we start this off in a good way. Thank you so much. We'll see him. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to introduce everybody to my wonderful wife who has been a great support with me for the last 14 and a half years. <laughs> what, uh, what my wife is going to be doing here is Something that as we, uh, as Quiquitlam, we want to share this teaching. It's very, very important that we pass this teaching on. I am going to be named your speaker today. Um, we call it a speaker. Nowadays, um, a lot of uh, groups will call it MC. <clears throat> so we call it speaker because I'm speaking about on behalf of the family. You know, so that's why you see me walking around with this paper. What my wife is going to do, <clears throat> she's going to cover this blanket that's being gifted to me from our community, from the family, and it goes over my heart, and she's going to tie it underneath my right arm. And what this is for is to protect me, to protect my heart. And then the, for those who are participate with other ceremonies, you're going to know and see that... Um, a lot of speakers will have this done to them, as well as a lot of workers, those who do the work on behalf of the family. So all workers will have this done. You know, so it signifies that we're being protected and we're being kept warm while we're doing the work on behalf of the family. You know, with Quiquitlam, I'm when one of the family members that says, Quiquitlam is all one family. 
you know, and that's very, very important that I teach that. So my family is protecting me and keeping me warm today so that way I can be here in front of you to speak today. So thank you. Now John's going to come up to officially delegate me as speaker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Uh, yeah, say something? Yeah, well, if you want. No, uh, thank you, Steve, for uh, honoring us with uh, your words today. Uh, please uh, um, start us off in a good way and finish us in a good way. So we appreciate all your work today. Uh, in honor, in front of our ancestors, uh, I, I'm honored to be here today to do this work too. So thank you. Oh, see ya. Oh, see ya. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I have so many stories I want to share with how important this is to me personally, as a Quiquitlam member. But I know that uh, we have a lot of work to get done today, so I might share some of my stories later. I'm honored to start calling up my leadership one by one to do the work that we need to do. I first would like to welcome up Chief Ed Hall. Thank you, Stephen. I swell, ESFOIL, CM Schaphelem Ed Hall, Tunnesqui, Talitsanak, Quiquaklam Tomach. RCM to see it's eaten all to me marking it in our me set quat wheelum ear turnish quick welcome toma good day how are you all ed hall is my english given name schap halem is my ancestral name honor friends relatives and visitors welcome to the ancestral and the ceded lands of the quick welcome people i just want to acknowledge uh, uh, a lot of uh, people that are here right now uh Starting off with our elders, Kwikwaklam, Sialahwe, Terry is here, uh, the staff, the, the leadership. I want to acknowledge the, the presence of a couple of uh, mayors uh, that are uh, from the Tri Cities here, in particular, uh, Mayor Richard Stewart of Coquitlam and Mayor Brad West of Port Coquitlam. I want to acknowledge the presence of our partners, uh, BC Hydro and Metro Van, and all of the media. Thank you for being here uh, to help uh, share our story and uh, get it out there and uh, be our messengers uh, for, for the good work that's being done today. And it's been going on for a long time and uh, more to come as, as the future days and weeks and months uh, uh, near us. I would acknowledge uh, Everyone, I want to acknowledge the, the, the medicinal workers that are here to uh, share their songs with us. Uh, and, uh, and I want to thank Stephen for being our speaker today. And I just want to be able to say I, I wish all of you well. I uh, hope you get a really, really good takeaway from this today. And, uh, and I, I wish your families well in you know, the coming days and weeks and months. And uh, prayers go out to those ones in the directions uh, where they're going to be uh, you know, uh, having some struggles and whatnot. Uh, we must keep in mind all of the things that are going on around us and uh, try to be helpful where we can be. So it, in saying all of that, I just want to say uh, thank you for allowing me to share a few <coughs> words with you. I also uh, want to make a couple more special acknowledgements uh, to a couple of folks that aren't here today, uh, to some of the Kwikwaklam, the Tsialahwe, uh, the elders uh, that aren't here that would uh, send along their uh, regards. and. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, the late uh, Norm Fletcher. He was one of our uh, advocates for uh, the salmon and the, the BC Hydro there. He actually uh, was a very, very good uh, you know, expert in uh, water hydrology, uh, the flow and everything, the powers of the water when it's released and whatnot, and how we could actually uh, uh, deal with uh, you know, uh, salmon you know, above the dam and, and then below it and stuff. So he was a really, really great help in that. And uh, dear Norm just uh, passed earlier this year. And I'd like to uh, uh, put my hand out to raise those to uh, Dr. Craig Orr, too, who's been an advocate for us for uh, many, many, many years, and our archaeology team, and everything. Er just everybody that's been involved, uh, past and present, and uh, who will be uh, you know, taking on uh, more things uh, in the future days. So, hi, Sepka. Thank you all. Before I introduce myself properly, I want to make sure we begin in a good way. And the next person I'd like to invite up is uh, Councillor John Peters, who is going to be doing our opening prayer for us. 
<clears throat> uh, good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, uh, I just need you, uh, well, I'll start us off with a, a special prayer today. Uh, and I just ask you guys to stand as I do this, uh, and, and we'll start going. Uh, yeah, so appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, creator, this is uh, uh, John Peters, uh, uh, hum humble family member of Coquilla Mosteo. I have a, a special request for you today, Creator, uh, in honor of uh, the work that we're going to do today. I, I just want to acknowledge uh, uh, the Coquilla Mosteo ancestors and ask them to uh, ask you to guide them here for uh, to witness this uh, uh, historic day, Creator. I also want to acknowledge uh, um, Musqueam's uh, Mosteo and Kualam's Mosteo for uh, just coming today to uh, help us uh, do this work for you today, Creator. I just want to also thank you for uh, honoring me to be here today uh, uh, because everything that we've gone through historically, I I'm just uh, grateful that I'm able to hear to witness this with my brothers and sisters from the other nations. Also, Creator, I want to ask you to um, or thank you for guiding our guests here today, uh, Metro Vancouver, VC Hydro, and both the cities of Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam in such a good and historic day, Creator. I also want to ask you to uh, uh, watch over them as they go home after today. I also want to acknowledge uh, my, my elders uh, that are here today. Uh, the one thing I want to say uh, today, Creator, is that uh, the one words of my elder that I carried with me uh, since I had the opportunity to meet her is that we're still here and we're still smiling. And, and I'm blessed for that. <laughs> For me, Creator, it's special that I'm able to be here because <clears throat> and so, uh, Creator, thank you. I feel my families and it's a blessing. So in honor of today, Creator, I just want to ask you to humbly uh, let us continue this work. Uh, we're building a brighter future for future generations within the Tri-Cities. <laughs> and just and and uh, and we want want to work together and and shoulder to shoulder in honor of Natsuma, one heart, one mind. So uh, for today, Creator, I just ask you to humbly watch over one, keep everyone warm and safe. I noticed that a lot of uh, our ancestors, the animals, have, uh, are curious on today, and uh, that's my special request: is just to honor uh, in honor of today, Creator. Please guide. Uh, not just the Coquilla Mosteo, but also the Musqueam and uh, Kwantlen Mosteo uh, ancestors here to witness today and, and appreciate you giving me this opportunity. My ancestral name is Humptimus. And his name was passed on to, down to me by our family who are all descendants of the people who lived here in Coquitlam Lake. So my name comes from this region. Humptimus. It's my pleasure to invite my cousins up who are going to be doing some singing for us today to help lift our hearts, to lift our spirits. Dennis, right? Yeah. <clears throat> this is my cousin Dennis, please. Yeah. And. Yeah. CM. CM will see you again. CM will get a smaller for Good morning, everybody. My English name is Dennis Leon. I come from Portland First Nation. The language that I speak is Hokkamelem. It's the Upper River dialect. I, I learned it when I when I lived with my grandparents in Saelis. And um, my English name is Dennis Leon. My 
traditional name is Tzaitzim Pin. It's been passed down from my grandfather. Uh, we're here today to to honor our relative Kwikwetlam Tesmoho, Eitos Malwal. And I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time of, out of your schedules to be here today to honor to honor our dear relatives and through the hard work that they've been putting through to uh, get done what, what needs to be done, things that are returning to our people. And just keep in mind the teachings of our ancestors and our loved ones that have passed on before us. Once again, Haichka, the song that we're going to sing is an honor song. It comes from my relatives in Staelis. And um, I'd just like to once again put my hands up to everybody and all my testimony for frequent ones for their hard work. We have to use aside. This work never goes unnoticed. And uh, I'd like to just say thank you for you know calling us in today to be a part of such a special day. Haichka, Siam. Thank you. 
keep in um, keep in them in your minds when you're doing this hard work. Today is a very historical day, and I'm, I'm very honored to be here with my best love of my sweet little family. Thank you. I'm going to ask for our counselor, George Taffy, to come back up. introduced myself. Didn't have a good sleep last night. Because I was trying to think what I was going to say. Elders always teach me. Let it come. Let the words come and it'll come. Requilling people have been here in time and memorial. We are the people of these lands that you see behind you. We are the spirit. We are the guardians of this place. Over the last 120 years, my people have been through a lot. But like my elder always says to me, we're still here. And we're still smiling. One hundred years ago, our chief wrote a protest letter that said, do not put this dam in. You will take what is Quiquitlam First Nation away if we do this? It was a powerful letter. His words that were said is that you will take the food out of my cupboard. Went on deaf ears. It was forgotten by people who were taken away. We were no longer allowed to be stewards. We were no longer allowed to be guardians of our watershed. And we watched our land transform. But the heart was still there. The elders always remembered. The elders never forgot. And they always made sure that it was passed down from generation to generation. Don't ever forget who you are, why you were here and that this fight's never over, never over. You have lost a battle, you have not lost the war. It's not over. There will come a time when you're going to be able to be heard again. 100 years later, exactly, we quit the First Nation with orders from the elders engaged with BC Hydro and the water use plan. How do I know that? I was there. I walked into a room. I'm just a fisherman, but I care. And I walked in a room with 30 other people sitting in a room making decisions on our watershed. I was scared. I was frightened, but I had the heartbeat of the elders and the ancestors with me when I walked in that room. And once again, Quiquitlam stood in that room and said, you must deal with the historical grievances that you have done to the people. We are redfish up the river. We are part of this watershed. We are part of that fish that's there. Through the work of the elders, they identified and helped understand that the fish got trapped 
behind the dam. They were still alive, like we put them. And they engaged and started to work with other entities to work together to find a way to see if we could restore the run. They were coconut. They put them back in the water. They went out to the ocean and they came home like they were before. Like we put them, the heartbeat was still there. Through those years, teams, these great people that you see here today, all of them that you see here today, teamed up with Quiquitlam First Nation and walked together with us, fought hard with the heartbeat of Quiquitlam First Nation leading the fight. And because of that, because of that hard work that they did, we're here today to celebrate the hard work, like my like the younger one here says, lots of ma, one heart, one mind, working together. Not you and me, us in the same road, working together. It wasn't just Quiquitlam who did this. You turn around, you look around the room, look at these people who are sitting here. A lot of these people who were here were there when we first went to that table. And they worked with Quiquitlam in order to have this day today. So it's not just Quiquitlam that did this, it's all the people that's in that room. And my hands are up to you, and you should be acknowledged, all of you that worked so hard to do this today. It is a wonderful, great celebration. It's historic. A hundred years from now, they'll be looking on that day. Who was there? Who were the people that were there when they did that hatchery? When they fought for that salmon? Everyone, this isn't just a fish hatchery. To my people, this is a restoring of our name. It's a restoring of our heart. It's a restoring of the culture that was wrongfully taken away. And it's a healing journey. A new road, I always call it, of us being together with our partners. Not our enemies, our partners, and working together. This truly shows that it can be done. And I'm proud to be here today. I am sad though that the ancestors and elders who were there, and I said it before, are not here. They should be here. They should be celebrating with us. And that's why you see the young one here coming to tears. Because they speak what those ancestors did like I do. My passion comes from my elders. My passion comes from those ancestors who are there. People like Matt Foy. People, DFO, Hydro, Metro, Cities. Together, apart. My elders say, or people try and say to my elders, you can't move the mountain. I'm here to tell you they're wrong. And today is proof of that. You take a good look around this room because here's the mountain. And guess what? The elders moved it. And that's proof. I could probably speak all day on this because I'm so passionate about this. But I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I thank you just for giving me the time to speak to you today and to tell you the heart that comes from me and my elders today. Don't ever stop believing and don't ever think it's not possible. That's what my elders always say. Because it is. 
My elders like to take on those challenges when you tell them it's not possible. They take it on and they prove you wrong. That heartbeat there is the ancestors and elders. Learn from them. Understand them. Respect them. And then you walk the new road. I'm probably not going to be able to see every all the good things that have come from this, but my kids will. My children will. They're going to see the benefits of all this great work. They're going to go to that fish hatchery. When that fish comes home and we get a fish ladder up there, they're going to celebrate that with the starting of this. The last thing I'm going to say to you today, <clears throat> When that first fish came home, and one of our elders, who wasn't an elder at the time, but one, one of those elders who's an elder now, walked up there, grabbed that first fish, he walked up to that dam, and he went out to that lake, and he put that fish in his arms. After a hundred years of them not being there. And he said, welcome home, Quiquitlam. And he spun around to the group that was there that helped him do it. His hands went up in the air and said, we did it. What a powerful thing to say. And so I will leave you today in those words that he said that day. To say those same words today. Thank you for all of you for being here. And we did it. Along. I'd also like to invite up Chief Ed Hall to share some words. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Councilor Chaffee and Councilor Peters for your words that you had uh, before myself here. Can everybody hear that back there? It's not so peaceful. I hope you're all enjoying the balmy weather. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's a really, really a pleasure and an honor to be here in all of your presence and, uh, and for all of you to become witnesses of uh, something that's uh, historically taken place today and it's going to be reflected upon in generations to come. I was thinking about uh, you know, numbers and something like that uh, early this morning when we talked about uh, 8,000 years and 10,000 years. To me, that's like uh, 400 to 550 generations, if you could uh, wrap your minds around that thought for a second or two. Uh, stewardship and whatnot. Uh, and now we've all uh, collected uh, different entities together, and, and uh, this is what we're going to do to you know, help restore some salmon. Those salmon are so vital and uh, you know, a much needed uh, part of the ecosystem here. We have bears, spa'oth, that's what we call them in the Hunkameenum. That rely upon that, and so does uh, you know the, the systems back here. You know for uh, you know, healthy ecosystems there. You know the bears will carry the carcasses off out of the water and up into the bushes and whatnot. There's a lot of nutrients that uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, follow that's uh, very positive when it comes to uh, you know having a, a big run of salmon uh, moving through the, the creeks and rivers all the time. So that'll be uh, one of our aims is to uh, get uh, you know get this thriving again. Uh, it is quite a uh, gauntlet to uh, go through. When you think about uh, the water that's maybe about a foot deep here, uh, you know, at its deepest in some spots, and then all the way down to the mouth there, uh, past the farms and everything, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a thing for those fish, you know, they're really, really hardy, uh, the ones that can make it, and um, we hope that uh, you know, we'll be able to get, uh, you know, hundreds, and maybe thousands of fish back here at some point in time. Um, as Councillor Chaffee said, uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of hard work has been done. Uh, some of us might not be able to get to see you know, the fruits of those labors, and, uh, and just uh, just in the last uh, couple of years, we've uh, you know, as much as I don't like to say it, but I'm not going to forget it because we're always going to be remembered. Uh, we've lost four elders uh, who are not here just from recently as uh, 13 months ago that actually knew that we were doing a lot of different kinds of work and that, uh, but they don't get to be here to see it. And, uh, and we'll be eventually the, the, in those similar canoes too where we're not going to be the ones to see it. But uh, anyways, uh, 
It's a legacy that we've been carrying for well over 120 years, 150 years, and we will uh, you know, keep the legacy going. There will be ones uh, coming up after us to uh, carry out the work and, uh, and see the fruits of the labor that we've all uh, you know, chipped in together to, uh, you know, to make happen. And uh, I'll just uh, share a quick little story. Uh, it goes back to about the 1950s on this river. Down in the lower reaches uh, where it uh, is in the confluence to the Fraser there. My mother was born there and uh, she grew up there. She spent about her first 13 years there. And uh, she's from a family of seven siblings. And um, a couple of her brothers uh, used to own and operate uh, over 30 feet long gill netter boats for fishing. So if you can imagine the length of the boats and uh, how deep those boats' hulls would go in below the water's surface. So that itself, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a story of a time and an era of how healthy the river used to be. And uh, so these, there's four boats, uh, including a couple of mom siblings, that used to line up, they used to race each other, right from the mouth of the Coquitlam, right on up to the, the bridge at Pitt River, as, as far as they could go. So, you know, it, it's, it's not a thing that can be done nowadays, obviously, uh, you know, due to uh, you know, time and everything, and erosion and that too, there's a lot of siltation in that river. It, it, is, it is a dream to, to be able to see a positive change for that, that will make it more beneficial for uh, fish, and maybe some new little tributaries down there that can be revitalized. And maybe some more spawning habitats too, not only uh, up here, but you know, down there it would be more natural down in the lower reaches. And uh, I hope that uh, more projects can uh, you know, come to fruition, come to light uh, you know, in, in the years to come to be able to, to bring back all of these samples because it's very important. Uh, you know, I wish, I wish uh, each one of us could go ask a bear how important uh, that salmon is, you know. You know like it's, just to, uh, you know, just to, you know, because they know, you know, they have to have that too to stock up for their, you know, their, their winter uh, rest, eh? and uh, they're doing that now, and uh, the chum are around, and uh, it's, it's good, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the way life cycles are going right now, and, um, you know, we want, uh, we want more of that, and uh, us being uh, stewards and guardians, and, uh, you know, uh, we want to work with everybody to make more of it happen. And uh, I hope that after today and all the days, weeks, months, and years going forward, you know, that there is going to be you know, a lot more of it, a lot more awareness to, you know, to everything that's going on around us because, uh, you know, there is, there is change that's coming and, it's, you know, it's just getting hotter. You know, we're losing a lot more of our forests. You know, the lands are going to be sliding into the places where the water once flowed uh, freely and, uh, you know, the fish swam, you know, all the time during their cycles. So I just want to uh, uh, close it at that. Just wanted to share that little bit and, uh, and let you have a couple of thoughts uh, that I carry with me all the time that you can uh, take away with yourselves and, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, feel free to you know, connect uh, after we get over our formal parts about what we're doing here and I'll uh, be glad to have a chat with you. Uh, thank you very much. We saved the youngest for the last. You guys want to draw beers? Thank you, everyone. Uh, my apologies. Uh, if people know me personally, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. It's just who I am. Uh, I like to laugh in uh, serious situations. Maybe that makes me sick in this kind of uh, day and age. That's okay, Dave. So. Uh, my personal thoughts of today, I'm very honored to try not to cry again because uh, what I meant, what I said was what I meant. And uh, um, <clears throat> so I'll try not to, and that's the thing, the Indian Act had, uh, made me, uh, gave me the title of counsel. Uh, me, I'm just a fisherman. I just, uh, I support my families as best I can. And I don't even look, I don't look uh, down on my people. I, I've walked side by side with them. I, I'm right in the village. I, uh, when they're sleeping, I'm watching over the village. So that's just the person I am. Uh, nothing special. Uh, I'm just here uh, just to do this work for not just the creator, but um, I guess as well. Uh, I've been working with uh, a couple of them over the last couple of years. And I've learned so much. And uh, to me, that's worth more than its weight in gold. 
<clears throat> so in honor of uh, the red fish day, and that's what hit me hard today, is that uh, that we're still here and we're still smiling. If you know us historically in truth and reconciliation, and I only bring this up today because it's the truth that uh, First Nations have lost a lot of family. And this is the best way to acknowledge them. Honestly, <clears throat> I had a hard time with the apology from the Pope because uh, those are just words. Moments like today, is, uh, it's an action. And this is more meaningful than just an apology. I, I don't know how else to explain it. And to be honest, after everything I learned, and, and I had to I acknowledge what my families have gone through, just understand how to work with them. Uh, it's just, and like I said, I wear my heart on my sleeve. And, and it was difficult for me at first because I didn't know how to engage with uh, um, the Coquitlam scale and other nations. But as soon as I learned what my family went through, it just just made me a better leader, and honestly, um, I don't know how to express this in any way, uh, <clears throat> any other way on how important this uh, work is just uh, to me personally, uh, and uh, yeah, to, to continue and, and uh, do this work is it's, it's so necessary. Uh, with global warming and such, uh, yes, uh, we're, there's a lot of challenges, but uh, just like the Coquitlam family, we're resilient, uh, we want to come back home. This, is, this has always been our home for thousands of years. So like the red fish, and that, that's why I, uh, I appreciate my elders' words, and it's one thing I carry for the rest of my days. And I'm still here, and I'm smiling. I'm a little, little uh, teary today, but <laughs> <laughs> that's only because uh, um, the most important thing of today is that everyone that's here today uh, cares, and, and that's all, all it takes to, uh, like Mr. Chappie said, move mountains and, and do this kind of work. Uh, same thing with my cultural workers, and they took the time today from their nations just to join the Quiquitlam Nation with our ancestors and families here, and, and I'm very blessed. It's, it's, I want to see this work today, and I'll keep it short. Uh, I'm just honored to be here. It's worth, the, the worth what it's worth to me, uh, it's weight in gold, it's the whole entire watershed, and if you can understand how big this watershed is, that's, that's more than I can ever ask for, just being part of a uh, um, uh, my family's history. Like I said, I'm just very lucky to be here. Uh, there could have been, uh, let's say my father was lost in residential school. Uh, let's say my mother didn't give me the opportunity to meet my family, and I wouldn't be here today to uh, uh, say these words to you. So it keeps me humble. Like I said, council is just a title. Uh, we all carry titles, but who you are and what you fight for, that's what's more meaningful. And, and the reason why I say that is I, and, and I just care so much about uh, not just the, my family, but all the families within the tri cities because, uh, like George, Mr. Chap said, if we, we work together in honor of Natsma, we can move mountains. And then we just de definitely got to change uh, the mentality of the world today because it's, it's getting difficult, things are uh, getting crazy, and, and uh, we got to stick together. And that's how we survived for thousands of years. So, Ben, uh, thank you so much. and appreciate your time. And, Thanks for bringing up with my. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Don't see him. Thank you. That term I just said, that's our language. We never had the titles that you're hearing me say earlier. Never. You own CM means our leadership. They're here, they represent us. And we as family trust them to represent us. Thank you for trusting me to be here to speak on your behalf today. I really, really have to share this. I'm really compelled. I really have a strong connection to words that come in the air. And I really have to share this after hearing what my leadership was talking about, that sadness they carry, because not everybody was able to join us today that started this journey. As many of you have heard, and as many of you, uh, well, not my own, I say about half of you that are here know what I do outside of this role. I am one of the land guardians for Creek Whitlam, and I've had the honor and benefit to learn from some very key people who have joined us today. And I really thank you for teaching me some of those things. Within months of teaching me, they lost me 
to go out solo and work on many different projects. You know, but one thing I've learned so, so importantly, every time I come home, and this is home for us, our ancestors gather around. Some of you were saying, oh, it feels chilly today. <laughs> but you know what? That's what our ancestors like. They are with us in such great abundance right now. They're crying because of the hard work Yom Sion has done. And I raise my hands, you know, because with your guidance and the guidance of our ancestors, the guidance of our elders, we're here today. And I have that confirmation that our ancestors are here. As, as my co-workers can tell you, every time I come home, one of my ancestors always flies by and gives me that acknowledgement. You're here where you need to be. You're at a time in your life that you need to be at. And this is so, so important. I really want to share that. I really want to share with my leadership. You know, please, I know it's sad. I know that all of our ancestors are with us. All of our loved ones are with us. They are watching over the work you're doing. And that's why I raise my hand to all of you. I really, really been waiting for this special moment. I want to invite up somebody who has been helping us and uh, guided us in a lot of the work we're doing. I'd like to invite up my elder, Thelma, to share a few words. Too short. <laughs> Good morning, my dear people. I really want to thank everybody for being here, first of all. I would also like to thank the Coquitlam people, our, our Coquitlam family, for having us here. It's been a battle since day one, and it will continue being a battle. But like the young men said, we're here, and we're still smiling. They've done everything to take us down. Residential school, missing and murder, overdose, and the list goes on. And it's just so, so good to see our people get back that's what was rightfully there in the first place. We can put that hamburger and that chicken back and we can start filling our fridges with fish, deer meat, duck, you name it. Everything that we ever feasted on before European contact. We still do. My late mother and that, my late mother and that, I was talking to my brother about that. We never had hamburger and chicken and that kind of stuff in our fridge. We always had duck, fish, deer meat, you name it. We had all our traditional foods. And I really miss all those traditional foods because we live right in that concrete jungle in Vancouver. And so my hands are up to all the Coquitlam people for really battling making sure they got their rights back. It's a long battle. I know it's still, and it's just the beginning. I know we still have a ways to go. But like the young fellow was saying too, also he was talking about reconciliation. I'm a survivor of residential school. And so this is really just the beginning of reconciliation. Truth is yet to come out of everything that happened in those schools. There'll be another day for that. Right now, we're going to celebrate. 
back then. We've got our territory back. We've got our fishing rights back. We've got our hunting rights back. I want to thank you all for being here to witness this historic day. This is going to be something to talk about. I have my granddaughter here, who I still talk about. I, I, I try to bring back everything that I was that I was taught, even though I was in that residential school for eight years. I still thank the Creator every single day for the parents that I had who were able to bring me out of all that, just those ugly feelings that I received from residential school, turn them into positive feelings so that we can go on. And this is proof today. This is so much proof today. And this is just the start. So again, my hands are up to each and every one of you. Hi, Chika, all my relations. Good morning, everyone. My name is Arthur Stogan. Uh, my, my given name and spiritual name is uh, We're from the Muskin First Nations, which is, at, which is uh, located at the mouth of the North Arm of the Fraser River. Many of you that from BC Hydro knew our late father, Vincent Stogan. A lot of them knew our Similano. We're the descendants of the great Chief Similano, who once in 1809 brought Simon Fraser down the Marty Fraser River from Yale, B.C. down to Fort Langley. And in those days, our, our great-grandfather was presented with a staff, about five feet high. He was, he was noticed for helping the first surveyors that came into the territory. And, you know, we're very proud of that. And the, our father also told us that, you know, back in the day there was no roads. We all traveled by canoe. Traveled up to visit the relatives, <coughs> equipment, equipment. Farther as far as, you know, all the way up, he said we have relatives all the way up to home, both sides of the river from home, Musqueam. It's a great honor today to be here, you know, to, to witness what, what's happening. We're also going to bless the ground that they're, that they're going to have the fish, fish hatchery on. So it's a great honor for us today for the Stogan family of Musqueam. Everybody knew, everybody knew our father, both of our parents. So it's an honor. We've been working with the chief and council for two years now. And it shows that they listen. Because when we started coming up here, my sister couldn't say it better herself. She said we were given two of these, two of these, and one of these for a reason. These to watch what they're teaching you. These to listen to what they're teaching you. Because there's going to be a day you're going to use this, just like we are today. I put my hands up to each and every one of you for being here today. This historic, a historical day for, for the Quinton family. Our dad always told us, we have relatives on both sides of the Fraser River from Muskegon all the way up to Hope. And be proud of that, which we are. He introduced us as we were growing up, since we were little. So today, I'm 70 years old today, and when I met Chief and Council of Quitman, I, I, you know, I, I was so honored, and, and the, the elders, when we came up to help, it's one thing our dad says, you never say no to anybody if they ask for your help, you go and help them, it doesn't matter how you get there, you do it. So I put my hands up to each and every one of you for being here today and listening, it's like learning. So I say, hi, Scott, see him and see I, and to the family, hi, Scott, see him for having us. Thank you for your special words. Yes, you are just as close to us as, as you say we are to you. And we love you like our extended family. Your late father was one of my first teachers. And then when he made that transition, my late uncle and my, my two late uncles took over that teaching. Uncle John and Uncle Baldy, from Stalins. Okay. So the teachings are always been close, and that's why you two were so close to me. 
we do have an honored member with us today, our elder. Would you like to share any words? <laughs> Before I call up our honored guests, I want to remind everybody, this is emotional to us today. This is such a heartfelt day because we have been here for at least 10,000 years. I want you to remember that, please. Our families have been here for at least 10,000 years, since the last Ice Age. And we have always, always been stewards of these lands. When you watch me, and I'm standing to the side, and I'm standing like this, it's because I take my role as a steward and as a guardian very seriously. You know, we're home. And I feel that connection. You know, that's why you see us with our hearts on our sleeve. We have that emotion. Is we have another piece that we're revitalizing. How we got our name. You've seen that on all the signs if you had a chance to walk around already. Great fish up the river. You know, that's what Creek Putnam is. You know, there are so many stories that you've heard from our leadership. And what the elders, who are now our ancestors, have passed down. Because that's how we learn. Everything is passed down by words. So remember this. Our chief was talking about um, how the river used to be. If you can remember how deep that river used to be, our red fish, our sweet little used to be so plentiful, our elders would say, I could walk across the river on the back of these fish. That's why this is so emotional for us. I really, really just wanted to share that. I now have some very honored guests to, to call up. I'd like to call up Chris O'Reilly. Please. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Stephen, for the important work today as speaker and for the kind introduction. I'm really uh, pleased to be here today, really honored to be here today with you. Um, I want to thank the Kukwetlam for hosting us here on your territory, welcoming us, being so generous in, um, in having us here today. I want to thank all the speakers, the chief and council, the spiritual and cultural workers, and the elders for, for sharing and helping us learn about how important this land and this water is to you, helping us better understand how the dam impacted your communities. One of the challenges with hydro dams is the benefits <coughs> of them are spread across our society, across the province. We get drinking water, we get electricity, we get flood control benefits. But the cost of the dam, the impact of the dam is felt very hard here in the valley, on the, on the land, on the, on the river, um, on the First Nations communities whose this territory, whose territory this is, and who have such deep ties to the land. The Coquitlam Dam was um, built here in 1913 by the um, Vancouver Power Company, which was a predecessor to BC Hydro. BC Hydro grew out of many companies, of which one was the Vancouver Power Company. And we want to acknowledge that when, when the dam was built, it significantly impacted the salmon production on the river, especially on the sockeye that, that needed the lake to, um, as part of their life cycle. And the elders have shared with us how significant those impacts are. George, Councillor Chaffee has shared with me how significant those impacts are. 
on on the, the people on the nation on the group level. The dam's location, we understand, was also very important. It was important ground um, for the Kukretlan people and the, the, the actual location of the, of the dam um, damaged the relationship of the Kukretlan people to, to that land. So I want to recognize all of those, those impacts and acknowledge them and, and just to say that we would do things very differently today, 100 years later. For more than two decades, the Kukwetlam Nation has been actively involved, as you've heard, in restoring the sockeye that once thrived in the, in the Kukwetlam River. And this is an interest that we at BC Hydro share with the Kukwetlam Nation. It is our hope that um, more salmon will return and more consistently um, up the river and into the, the watershed and help restore the important spiritual, cultural, and ecosystem values that um, salmon um, provide. To help advance the work, we're really pleased to be able to partner with so many um, organizations, partnering with the Kukwetlam, the Greater Vancouver Water District, and Fisheries and Oceans Canada to build the hatchery here, which will produce 15,000 smolts per year. The funding for the project came through our Coquitlam Tunnel project, which is a capital project we have in BC Hydro to work on the tunnel between Coquitlam Lake and Bunsen Lake. And um, the hatchery will provide a great opportunity to leverage that work, to take advantage of that work, to rebuild salmon stocks for future generations. And it also provides us an opportunity to work with the Coquitlam and to learn from the Coquitlam, get to know one another. As we acknowledge the past, we do have an opportunity to focus on the future and on the generations to come and to find that road um, that Councillor Chaffee spoke about. So a better future is what this project represents for the Coquitlam to manage the salmon restoration on the territory, for improvements in the habitat and water use planning efforts, and for the trust that we will continue building together in the watershed. But we acknowledge it is only a start, and moving forward together, we're committed to work with the Kukwetlam on cultural recognition opportunities, and specifically um, to the hatchery. Beyond the watershed, we've been working to advance more reconciliation more broadly in BC. We recognize the importance of partnering with First Nations on this work early on to make meaningful steps towards reconciliation. What we're doing today is an important step and action has been said after many years of studies and talks and, and meetings, but it's action. But it's still only one step on a, on a long journey that will require ongoing partnership. And we at BC Hydro are committed to continuing to collaborate with the equipment. I do, um, before I um, make way for the next speaker, we do have a gift to um, to um, offer the Portland, and really it's a, a recognition and, and thanks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for the Kukwetlam, I want to recognize the patience, the integrity, the commitment um, from the community and the leadership um, that have, have worked so hard to bring us here today. And so I want to, um, I want to thank um, and recognize Chief Ed Hall, Councillor Chafee, um, Glenn Joe, Nancy Joe, and Councillor John Peters, um, and um, and all the other members of the community, um, including those who are no longer with us today, who have made this, this happen. So we have a photograph here that was taken back in March of, of this year. And, um, really just represents all the many people that are working so hard to, um, to make this success. And um, I think it represents um, both, uh, all the work that we've gone to today, but the work we will do together. False proof of some people who blink the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much uh, for being here again, being so, so generous. Uh, 
moving right along. Uh, next uh, speaker I'd like to invite up is Elf. There he is. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for having us. Uh, thanks, Chris, for your words and support. I want to start by echoing Chris's recognition of the people and First Nations commitment to salmon restoration. And we're honored to be partnering with the people and First Nation uh, on this innovative program. We look forward to improved salmon returns, um, supporting salmon restoration at the Portland watershed and developing a deeper relationship with the people and community. Thank you, Al. Our next guest I'd like to invite up is Board Chair Sab Gallywalk. Thank you. I would like to begin in a good way by acknowledging the Kortlam First Nation territory and thanking the elders in attendance today. Thank you also to Chief Ed Hall, Council Shafi, and Council Peters, and all the Kortlam First Nation members and staff for hosting us here on your traditional territory. I'm pleased to be here along with my colleagues, Mayor uh, West and Mayor uh, Stewart, and also Larry Dovalli, our Chief of Guard, our CAO and Commissioner, and other Metro staff. Your nation has stewarded lands and waters within your territory since time out of mind. Today, we are pleased to collaborate with you on ways to further honor your deep connection to this land and your culture. Doing our part to formally recognize the historical and cultural significance of indigenous practices has been an important focus for Metro Vancouver as part of our commitment to reconciliation. Metro has participated as a partner in Coquitlam Sockeye Restoration Program since 2012. The hatchery that will be built on this site is a result of that group effort. Metro Vancouver is supporting this project in several tangible ways. We will be supplying the primary water connection for the facility and providing boats and technicians to assist the brood stock collection. We are committed to ensuring the facility is protected by providing security and emergency after our response. We've also designated funding to enhance cultural recognition around the hatchery site and look forward to working with you on developing those ideas. I would also like to acknowledge and recognize BC Hydro for playing a key role in the construction and operation of this important Sockeye 7 hatchery in conjunction with Professional First Nation. We look forward to working and sharing resources with the partners in this project as we venture forward and important shared goal. Sockeye salmon were once plentiful in the waters within your territory. Your commitment to re-establishing their population is an inspiring story of stewardship and guardianship. Further generations will benefit from the ballast that's being restored today and restored in nature today. The relationship with Coquitlam First Nation is very important to Metro Vancouver. I'm proud of the path we are taking together and thank you for walking with us on this very important journey towards reconciliation. 
Thank you, Sal. I'd like to invite up Bridget Kane. Good morning, everybody. My name is Bridget Payne, and I'm a director with the uh, DFO Salmon and Enhancement Program. I'm very honored to be here today on the ancestral and traditional territories of the Quiquitlam people. It is with a lot of um, feeling that I, I accept the words of the, 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 the leadership, the, the chiefs, the counselors, and the elders because it speaks to me of a, uh, a resilience of the people that gives me a lot of hope for the resilience of the, the salmon in this watershed. We are very, um, the role of DFO in this partnership is, has been ongoing for, for multiple years, I'll, I'll spoke to that. Uh, we've been largely playing a role of technical and biological support um, as it relates to the, the, the restoration and rebuilding of fish in this watershed. We are very pleased to be part of this historic event where we do see tangible actions and support of the salmon in this watershed. We acknowledge the partnership uh, of BC Hydro, uh, of Metro Vancouver, and we acknowledge the leadership and the vision and the heart that the people of the Coquitlam Nation and the leadership have shown, both present and, and past and future. We know that this is just one step on a long journey of working together in collaboration and we very much look forward to that journey, that journey of, of, of working together and of learning from each other. Because for me, that's one of the most powerful experiences that I am taking away from this, this work, is it's a journey of learning. So we are pleased. I acknowledge my staff who have been working in this watershed and with, with the Quick <coughs> and the other partners for many years. Um, I acknowledge them and their efforts. And we look forward to providing technical and biological support to this project at a variety of different levels, but certainly in support of the operations of, of the new facility. Um, but we look forward as well to that, that, that uh, journey of, of learning, again, where we can bring our technical and biological expertise to the table and learn from the, the traditional and historic knowledge of the, of the nation here and the contemporary knowledge of this watershed and the very important connection that the people of the Quick Whitland Nation have to it. So thank you very much, and we look forward to this journey uh, going forward. Thank you, Bridget. A very well-known name to us, and a very special friend to me, Matt Foy. I'm a salmon restoration biologist in my career. I don't make speeches, so <laughs> I have written down. But I also have been on the river for quite a while now, so and it's really nice to see all these familiar faces. <laughs> I'm embarrassed trying to get names to faces. It's been a challenge today. There's just so many people who have been involved in this watershed over these decades. So my word for today, my word for today is Heichka, thank you. And the thank you is for all, all those that cooperated and collaborated in the past, present, and now moving forward. So I was involved, I was first introduced to the watershed, not, not a lifetime ago, but in 1993, early, relatively early in my career. And it was only because all the parties that had interest in salmon in the watershed agreed to collaborate at the beginning of the water use plan era. And the very first project I was involved with was a technical site, a wetland creation just below the dam. I actually thought we might be going up there today, but I'm happy we're here. But there's a pond that we focused on coho salmon that existed in the river. And of course, there was a spawning portion of the wetland and the chum salmon chum salmon of the time found it also. But I mention it because the water supply came from a valve on the main, main uh, called the blowout valve, the Metro Vancouver control. It 
wasn't designed for fish habitat, but we agreed to collaborate. And that wetland still today supports all of these wonderful salmon spawning, probably today. But more importantly, when we looked at the river and we talked collaboratively, we realized there was a species missing. It was pink salmon. They had disappeared in 1957, almost a lifetime ago for many of us. So in 1997, the parties gathered together and looked about. There's no pink salmon here. Can we go to some nearby relations? It was interesting. Interesting. We had uh, relations from Stahelis. So where could we find a cold mountain stream somewhat similar to the Kutlam? We found it in Weaver Creek. And eggs were collected, incubated at this Stahelis hatchery in Stahelis country, and then transferred to little field incubators that were put in the spawning channel. From that beginning, that year, and I think the next cycle of pink salmon, that's the only enhancement that was done, pink salmon returned to the river. And if I recall right, in the great year of 2013, when the ocean was beautiful and welcoming for pink salmon up and down the west coast, 30,000 pink salmon were naturally spawning in the river not, not very long ago. So again, this is a hopeful so I, I, I'll get to my real story. That was sort of the preamble. It's a very hopeful uh, business here, listening to everyone today. We are working together. If we work together, the salmon will take care of himself. So, um, and I want to say a special thanks to my, I call them my fellow salmon travelers that I've traveled with on the river, particularly in Quick Plum. It was in this convention, Nancy, Joe, Glenn, Joe, George, Jeff. Very, very close all those years, talking about salmon, talking about habitat, this is poor hatchery, what could we do? It's a slow path, but a long journey. And all the, all the others that have been mentioned, Dave, tens of people, perhaps hundreds of people have been involved in this program. So I was asked specifically to talk about the sake salmon. And, uh, and what this facility would mean to them. And so I wrote a story because, I, again, I don't do speeches, really. And the title was, George Had a Request. <laughs> uh, I mean, George is my friend. If a friend asks you to talk about something that you don't really know that much about, you do it. And he said, would you be willing to speak about what does this mean to the Quintum River Socket? So I, I came more philosophical. So after a little thought, here's my personal opinion on what the new hatchery means to the sockeye of the Quitman River watershed and those that care about them. We've heard today of who cares about them. many interests of Quitman care about them. I could choose to talk about the technology of this hatchery and some of the strategies that might be used here for sockeye salmon enhancement, but I know there's people that know a lot more than that will be talking for weeks, months, and years. This is a challenge. This is a journey. So, of course, I wrote this in my quiet basement. And I thought about a friend, an old friend from my youth that had just done a long, lonely journey uh, to talk to himself about life. It was across the open spaces of Spain. Now, I'm telling you this on a cold day. Uh, because it was very hot in Spain. And it was called the Camino de Santiago, the Way of St. James. It's where people often go on a journey to talk to themselves and ask themselves what's the meaning of their life. And, and this is a journey that we are uh, in, entering today. So along that journey, uh, he had a, had a terrible day where he lost the path. That was a hot day. Uh, him and his partner ran out of water. There was no towns. It was in the remote uh, flats or central plains in Spain, and he said he walked 41 kilometers before he found his safe house, and called it albergue, or place of refuge. So that's got me thinking. He, never, he said he never wanted a safe place as much as he did that day. So thinking about what we're talking about today, relates to what I was thinking about my friend John's experience as I was reading, writing this. So, a pilgrimage is a journey to a sacred place of spiritual significance. You've heard that today. A 
pilgrimage by its very nature undoes certainty. It rejects the safe and familiar. It is change, and change can be scary. Quick, quick quote. We've heard a people in a red fish community bound together by their shared history and experience seeking something lost for generations, but still calling to them undertake a pilgrimage with an uncertain path and outcome. So this place, this hatchery, to me, represents a place of res- refuge, as, about, as I've been told, it's quick quote, a place of refuge, as my friend John desired so much on his worst day of his journey. So this place, this hatchery, has been provided by those that care about the welfare of these pilgrims. Are undertaking their personal journey, seeking a poorly marked path to a place of spiritual significance to them. More than about compassion. So, think of living beings with choice. We're human focus. Think of living beings with choice. So, what makes a, so- a young sockeye salmon juvenile, after spending a spring, summer, fall, and winter, in the deep, familiar places of Quitlam Lake, oh, you compel pale to swim south and follow a uh, seek out a deep, dark, hidden path under a concrete mountain, as we call it down, and then follow a path along moving waters. They've never experienced moving waters in their lives. They're from a lake. And then they go to the Great Salt Lake. It's so strange and yet so familiar. So. If you think about it, for 30 generations, the certainty of Quitlam Lake allowed generation after generation of sake to spawn, live, and die in the relatively peace and certainty that the deep, calm waters of the lake provided. Again, it was hope. And yet, when given a chance, when flows were released differently through the dam, the reservoir was drained lower, as I recall, to, to, to entice and provide an opportunity, only an opportunity, for migration. Some of those juvenile sockeyes that we heard uh, showed us they had not forgotten the lessons their ancestors had learned over 2,500 generations, seven generations, since the lake was born from the glacial peace. So when the first sockeye salmon returned in 2008 to that concrete mountain, we all witnessed the miracle, and that's something few pilgrims get to experience and should not be taken lightly. To think about the steps that that single fish took in its life, living in a lake, its generations have been living in a lake and they face the world, and they take, face predators and sea lions and fishing nets. They might have seen the lights of uh, mid. Uh, ocean trawlers coming from different parts of the world and came up the Fraser River and came back here. It was a miracle that fish came back. And that gives us hope for future miracles. So I see the hatchery as our collective efforts to assist those pilgrims, us, you, and them, making this journey into unfamiliar places, answering an inner call only they can understand. So being simply human, we must use our stories from the past, our best available science from the present, and our desire and persistence, persistence for a better future to use this facility wisely for the benefit of Quiquitla, red fish up the river. So the journey will be difficult and sometimes lonely. This is not an easy task to reestablish. Difficult task. We all must understand that. But like any journey, the journey I just described, it's worth taking. We heard that today. So, like all pilgrimages, it is what we learn along the way about meaning, purpose, values, or truths that is the gift that this hatchery structure can give us all. So, thank you all. I hope I got that right. And Heichka, my friend George, for inviting me to talk today.
was a pleasure and an honor, and I'm really happy that things are going well for me here today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Sam, that's we're bringing people together here to get ready for the very important part of our, our, our next uh, piece of work here. We are going to be moving into ceremony. And at that time, once we move everybody into the ceremonial area, um, we're, I'm going to be asking for uh, no pictures, no videotaping, no recording of any type. This work is very, very important to us. You know, it's, it's always been a teaching to not do this type of work with under such recordings.